In this video, we'll practice a meditation for the protagonistic scenes with a protagonistic or positive stimulus and a negative stake slide. I did videos for other scene types too. Uh, look for them in this playlist. A protagonistic scene with a protagonistic stimulus but a negative stake slide has the following phases and milestones. First, there's the scene orientation. Who is the POV character? Where is she? In what situation is she in? And when does this scene take place? Second, the stimulus. A protagonistic stimulus enters the scene, which is helpful for the POV character. In this case, we assume the POV character is the protagonist or an ally. Third, the stimulus tempts the POV character to go on the offense and the scene mood is excitement. The POV character formulates a scene goal that allows her to take advantage of the protagonistic stimulus. Fifth, the stakes. The scene goal is at stake. Sixth, the POV character pursues the scene goal. Seventh, as the POV character pursues the scene goal, she faces adversity. In this case, adversity is powerful and will eventually overcome the POV character. Next, the POV character gets involved in the struggle against adversity and the realization of the scene goal. The POV character meets resistance and obstacles, find helpful things and meets helpful people. See how the stakes slide back and forth. The POV character has a partial success, but adversity kicks her back a little. Or the POV character has a partial success, but adversity kicks her back even further. When adversity peaks, the POV character goes all in and enters the climactic action. And she loses. Let me give you an example. Robert is a nerdy programmer who neglects apartment maintenance. The pipe below his kitchen sink has been dripping for days. It has annoyed him, but he has ignored it. During lunch break, we, he watches uh, YouTube videos. He comes across a video that teaches how to fix leaking pipes, which is the protagonistic stimulus. It motivates him to repair his pipe. He borrows tools from his neighbor, helpful things. He asks the caretaker, helpful people, to shut down the main water valve. The main water valve is rusted in and they can't close it. Robert decides to repair his pipe anyway. The neighbor's tongue pliers turn out useless. He goes to the hardware store and buys an alligator wrench. On the way back from the hardware store, he gets mugged. Conflict. Robert fights with the mugger, the enemy, and hits the mugger with the alligator wrench. The police sees the fight and arrests Robert and the mugger. A witness, a helpful person, approaches the police and tells them that Robert got mugged. The police lets Robert go. On the way home, Robert meets a friend who invites him for a coffee. Distraction. Back home, Robert opens the rusty clamping ring with the alligator wrench. The clamping ring breaks, that's the loss, and water floods the floor. Robert runs to the caretaker and with the alligator wrench they manage to close the main water valve. Robert calls a plumber, a helpful person. There's no plumber available on that day and Robert needs to wait until the next day. All apartments are without water, scarcity, and the other tenants are mad at Robert. Conflict. Two more things before we start. First, imagine as many details as possible and write down everything you saw, heard and felt as clearly as possible. When you write the first drafts of a scene, you should always overwrite. Cut and edit later. Better too much material than too few material to work with. Movie directors overshoot and cut later too. Second, you may want to keep your mouse on the pause button so you can pause the video when you need more time for a particular phase of the visualization. Ready? Sit comfortably, relax, take a few deep breaths and close your eyes. Think of a scene you want to write. Don't go into details yet, just think of the situation and get ready to enter the scene. Now, enter the scene. 
look around. What do you see? Move through the surroundings. What do you hear? What do you smell? Touch some of the things in the scene. Visualize the scene as a present reality. This is happening now. How does the POV character look like? What is she wearing? What is she doing? Is she going somewhere? Is she waiting for something? Or is she working on something? Look over her shoulder and see what she's doing. What situation is your POV character in? Is she in a good or bad situation? Is she in a fight? Is she sick or tired? Is she in danger? Is she with friends? What is the POV character's mood and emotional set? Is she angry? Happy? Sad? In good spirits? Now let the protagonistic stimulus enter the scene. Is it a person or an event? How does it inspire or motivate the POV character? How does the POV character react to the stimulus? Does she ignore the stimulus at first? How does she emote? What does she think? What does she feel? What scene goal does the POV character formulate to take advantage of the stimulus? The POV character pursues the scene goal. As she does that, she faces powerful and or multiple types of adversity. Is there something that distracts the POV character from pursuing the scene goal? Is something in her way? Does a person try to stop her? Does she find a tool? Does she meet a helpful person? Does an opportunity present itself? Is there a complication? Does she face a conflict? The POV character has a partial success, but adversity kicks her back. The POV character has a partial success, but adversity kicks her back even further. Notice how the stakes slide back and forth. The POV character moves back and forth, but overall she loses. She enters the climactic action and goes all in. She loses and does not reach the scene goal. How does she react to her failure? How does she emote? What does she think? What does she do or say? What does she feel? Relax and wait a few moments while additional uninvited images stream in. When they subside, end the meditation and open your eyes. For important scenes like the inciting incident, midpoint, all is lost moment and climax, you want to meditate on the same scene a few times. Each meditation should end with a deliberate effort to make a couple of details sharper and brighter. This is always possible. Meditate only once a day. You want to give subconsciousness time to elaborate the meditation while you sleep and come up with new suggestions that you can harvest during the meditation on the next day. You can write down the scene anytime you want. For example, you can meditate on the scene and write it down and meditate again the next day and write down the new details, etc. Just don't edit the scene yet. You're in the creative writing phase. Intelligent pantsing, so to say. Editing is an intellectual activity and would tilt the balance towards the right side of the brain and upset the meditation. I hope you enjoyed this video and visualized the cool scene. If so, please don't forget to like the video and subscribe. Love and light.